Okay, it's the video that you've been waiting for. Yes, the reason why I've come all the way to Australia. Yes, my cousin David's wedding to his fiance Carol. And uh, the first thing we did was go and collect the suits uh, on the Thursday. And um, it was the moment of truth to see whether the measurements that my mother did for me a um, month or so ago were actually correct or not. So now let's see whether the suit fits or I have to do safety pins and the belt. It looks all right. Let's see whether it fits when I put it on. No. Look. It fits. Yay. My mother's measurements were right. Yeah, just sounds about yeah, It's not simple. Yeah, the best is to be a man's corset. Not really. <laughs> just very posh. Then on the morning of the wedding, we had a um, pre-wedding game of pool to calm the nerves. Sir, I look like we look like a fairy. You gonna be small? Yeah. You gonna be small? One pant uh, leg is. Uh, small, big. Small yeah. Those are indicative of your attention. Yes. 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 Early at the church and ready to prepare it. Now, the wedding lasted an hour and 20 minutes so as you haven't really got an hour and 20 minutes here it all is in five minutes
And following the wedding, of course, there was the reception. And the wedding reception is in this restaurant called the Boat House, which has an absolutely stunning view of Perth. And of course, no wedding would be complete without speeches. First the best man, then Dave to reply. That's right, David, it's Good evening, everyone. My name is Fabian, it's Catherine Pollyo, and I'm the sleeping guy. <laughs> I'm here to render my services this evening because David is the best man. He's looking around, you can see why that was the case. <laughs> but it would be reticent of me to begin without first diverting everybody's attention to the lovely lady on my wife on my right, but the lovely ladies <laughs> on my left here. Um, they did a wonderful day today supporting Carol, helping her out, doing all the shoes and all the other stuff that goes with it. So I'd like to propose a toast to the uh, stunning bridesmaids on my left. <laughs> so you know when I sat back and I thought about my um, association with David, uh, actually we call him Donkey. So, it's nice <laughs> so, <laughs> when writing the speech, I actually found that it, our relationship stretches back 21 years. And um, I know when I hear someone talk about uh, knowing somebody for 21 years, you, you like to think, well, they, they grew up together, they must have you know, lived around the block, they went to each other's houses, they went to school. You know, I'd like to say that, but unfortunately for David and I, when you count back 21 years, it's like first year university, so uh, <laughs> actually it's second in David's case, but <laughs> we, we don't talk about that tonight. Um, so both when we were teenagers, uh, which when you think about, we were probably still kids, really. Um, so when I first met David, um, my first impressions, and I, and I can't really think of any other way to describe it, um, but as someone who resembled Luke Skywalker. <laughs> he sort of had this blondish, blondish, floppish sort of hair around his head, past his ears, his blue eyes, his fair complexion. And he had an unusual construct for wearing like black skivvies and like a, a black pants and black shoes. He was really just missing a lightsaber. <laughs> and if you've seen Return of the Jedi, you know exactly what I mean. And then I found out he had a twin sister. And I just thought, oh man, I'm going to meet your dad. <laughs> so, so we actually, so, so we met at university, you know, and I should say it was college because we actually, you know, we lived together. We, we stayed together at college. Not together, together. It was a 90s, you know, together. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We, uh, we brought it together at Curry Hall along with uh, quite a few other guys. Not that we were all together together, but we did. Um, anyway, so Dave, that's why I discovered his rich personality, you know? Pretty much everything, the whole Jedi thing, you know? But no mind tricks, no mind tricks. Um, so the main things I discovered about Dave was his very competitive nature. And um, I've got probably too many examples to talk through this evening. Um, he's very sporting but not in the English sense of being sporting, you know, like when you lose. <laughs> and you're quite, you're quite affable about losing, that sort of stuff. He's, he's sort of the opposite of whatever sporting is in that sense, like extreme violence. <laughs> and, uh, but he is sporting in terms of his ability to play sports. So uh, he loves playing volleyball. There's a little table over there, you'll probably test my too. Um, but love is probably not the right word to use, it's probably insufficient. Um, obsession, mania, 
fixation, OCD. Um, any psychologist like to help me? It's I'm probably aware of much better words to use for David and his relationship with volleyball. Um, he was also a very good soccer player. Um, although you actually wouldn't want to be between him and the ball, or between him, the ball, and the goal, um, because he wouldn't, you know, normal soccer player trying to get around you. He just wanted to go straight through you, um, and he kicked the ball as hard as he could in a direction that sort of resembled the goal. Um, and if you copped it. Pretty much knew about it. We hit one ball, we were um, just a couple of mates playing three and three at the front of college, you know, a couple of metres apart. Oh. Into the next college, there was the ball. <laughs> um, Donkey loves fishing. <laughs> More evident in his later years than at college, although I do remember him popping off with Eugene to go fishing, sometimes late at night. <laughs> <laughs> We never knew what they were fishing for. We never saw any fish. <laughs> David is a very softly spoken, warm, contemplative, and quite chatty when he gets when he gets going. He's, he's very generous with his time. He, he loves to help others. I distinctly remember David helping me many times. He moved lots of heavy stuff really um, all over the place. I also recall a special time when uh, he went fishing. He took my little nephew fishing for the first time. And uh, he patiently showed him how to thread his hook and how to cast the line. And even though he got snags, he was very patient with him and pushing them all together. Um, so he was really good in that instance. It's a good thing there was no soccer ball around, probably, but went well. Um, some other things I'd just like to mention in passing, because I can't go through them all in detail tonight. Um, he can't play pool very well, uh, <laughs> and most people in the last few days have been witnessed. He, he hates losing to me in pool, and he keeps counts of those losses. Um, he's a very competitive driver as well. He's got lots of demerit points. Um, <laughs> and it's probably good that his current job is offshore in Brazil, and only involves him flying in and out. Um, as I mentioned earlier, his nickname is Donkey. Yes, yes. Yes, he got it at college. Yes, yes. No, definitely not what you're thinking about. <laughs> Yes, he can make his pecs tickle. <laughs> can, he can. And uh, no, he's not very humble, despite what he might like you to believe. <laughs> um, David's first beginnings with Carol started simply enough a meeting through mutual friends, exchange of a business card, a few dinners, going to Cirque du Soleil. Uh, you know, to this day, David still has that Cirque du Soleil ticket with him. Ah, yes, I know. So sweet, so sensitive, so caring. <laughs> Thoughtful, as David would like to say. And when I asked David about this, he said, yes, yes, that way I can remember the date. <laughs> so, I remember David speaking a lot about this girl that he had met and how well they could converse and have fun. Um, they both love travelling, whether to Exmouth or Langkawi or Singapore, and of course uh, to Europe, David ultimately proposed. Um, unfortunately for Dave, probably no ticket on that day, so don't know how he's going to remember that. <laughs> uh, Carol is a lovely person with a wonderful personality, and after uh, having met her family, it's obvious to see where she's got these attributes from. Um, I think it's wonderful to see Dave welcomed uh, and accepted into their hearts and minds with open arms. And uh, hopefully this is still the case, despite anything that I might have said this evening. <laughs> so if you'd like to know where you can talk to um, So look, I'd like everybody now to uh, charge their glasses and um, join me in a toast to the bride and groom. To the bride and groom. To the bride and groom. I'm <laughs> May their lives be filled together with love, happiness, friendship, and of course children. May, may their only pain be the taste of champagne. <laughs> to the bride and groom. Thank you very much. So the last speech of the evening is from my little brother. 
David. <laughs> and um, he, yeah, he's had a big year. He's turned 40 and he's got married. So up, up you come, Dave. Oh, well, thank you very much, Fabian. Um, for this. <laughs> It's Mr. Donkey to you, by the way. On behalf of my wife and I, uh, uh, we would like to thank you for coming here today and uh, sharing our celebration and our special day with us, and uh, also for the, the many gifts, wishes, and uh, hearts that we have received. Um, I did have a, a speech written. Um, but now that I'm a married man, I have to read one that Carol wrote for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a lot of people to thank today, um, but um, uh, my sister and my dad uh, thanked a lot of uh, a lot of the overseas visitors. Um, we, we have 25% yeah, uh, of the people here are from overseas, so uh, a very very happy you guys could come uh, from Singapore and Canada and uh, the UK and, um, and, and various country towns as well. People have made a real effort to come, so and we're very um, you know, honoured that you, you could really make the time to, work, to, to come today, uh, being working day as well. I'd also especially like to thank uh, Carol's parents, um, Tony and Belita, for welcoming the family. Um, from the first moment they met me, um, I, I was a little bit scared, um, I've got to say. Um, but, uh, but after the, the first meeting, it was all good. Uh, and I must thank you for all the wonderful dinners and uh, to Tony, uh, my, my, my Scotch drinking buddy, yeah, all the Scotches. Um, yeah, I was a little bit worried because uh, Carol, uh, she, she knows me as being pink. She's, she's yellow, so I was a bit worried on that one. And there's a little bit of an age difference. Uh, but, but now my sister has laughed. Uh, I was going to be younger. Um, Tony and Belita, I uh, would like to know that. Count on me to uh, love and take care of Carol for the rest of my life. And of course, uh, <clears throat> um, thanks, uh, Alan and Steph, who are also with me, the family. Um, now, uh, I've been told how, how we met. We haven't really talked about the engagement. Um, uh, th thanks very much. Carol, my beautiful wife, who I love and adore, um, for organising almost everything tonight. I mean, as you know, I work away um, and I've done very little. Uh, <laughs> Carol has done the most and it went very well today, uh, so far. I <laughs> still have to find what else to do. Uh, she has a very long trip. Um, but it's gone very smoothly, except I had a little struggle getting that ring on today. <laughs> on my finger. Um, you look very lovely tonight, and I hope we have a, a long and happy future together. Um, we have a few pet names for each other. Um, currently, I am Poopsie and Poo. <laughs> Carol has been baby, sweet. Just pee, pee and ham soup, <laughs> and, and soup. <laughs> so, uh, another reason why the, the night has been very well organised. Um, Alan, Alan and Steph got engaged in Paris in uh, 
uh, late 2009, of course, yeah. And uh, was, Carol was expecting something soon, <laughs> soon, soon afterwards. But to, to let you know, she actually did start planning before Ellen was dead. So, so we went um, went on a holiday to Langkawi, maybe three or four months later after Alan and Steph were engaged, and uh, and it was a very nice holiday. Uh, very, uh, Carol had called ahead and begged for a uh, to uh, to a better room for uh, time. We got this nice one near the forest, very very nice room, and, uh, and it was very upset. <laughs> but, but, but we were going to Europe later in the year, and we were going to Paris. So uh, maybe my brother likes to stay where we're going to have a place with Paris. So London, Paris, uh, then uh, Lucerne, Switzerland, and, and Rome. And so London passed, Paris passed, <laughs> most of Switzerland passed. Uh, we went to um, with the Jungfrau one, one day, which is a bit of snow on a year went. Um, and it was, uh, you know, we passed this lot of nice, beautiful, pretty places, waterfalls and stuff. And I did see one very particular nice place that had the, the waterfall and um, a beautiful turquoise green lake and mountains and smoke and cup and cats. I thought, oh, this, this, this might be a, a good place to go. And, um, so, so, the next day we went to, I think we went to the, the tourist bureau, maybe on the way back, and checking it out, what we had to do to go to this place for, uh, for a picnic. Um, I think Carol lost a little bit of heart when, uh, when I started asking about the fishing, um, <laughs> how, how I could get to go fishing. <laughs> but uh, lucky for her that we had to get a license for just Saturday. But you wouldn't get a right until Monday, so, so we went off to this place that we were told was, uh, we went to one train station, got off at this little town, a one hour romantic walk along the lake. And uh, to the next town, and we would get back home trying to think to the, the, the town that we were finally going to. Uh, the one hour, well, turned into uh, four hours, uh, a hot day. Uh, when we got to the town we were going to, the top the mountain, after an hour walking there, and, uh, and finally, so well, you know, five and a half hours. <laughs> I have been married. <laughs> 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 on, on a place on a mountain top called the Shoemu, thousand five meters high. We are around this little peak. We are champagne. It was our um, was our uh, anniversary that day too. So uh, and a little picnic, but. Um, she sculled her champagne and, uh, and wanted to leave because it was a little bit scary. Uh, so, we, so we left and uh, maybe we got as far as the door over there and decided, oh, well, you know, I don't do it now. I'm just not going to get it going. I called her back, went down to one knee, and uh, I can't remember what I said. But, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't remember her saying yes either, but I, 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 and, uh, I know we did have difficulty getting the ring on the finger again. It was uh, forced on by Carol, and, uh, <laughs> and then she started calling her parents. And the first thing she said was, I'm engaged. <laughs> oh, we don't <laughs> Another thing to mention was, um, you know, Carol's always said she could read Tony and Belita like a book. You know, whenever they've held a secret back from her, she, she has known apparently. And, and same with Alan. And uh, anyway, we were waiting in the Emirates Lounge to go to uh, Dubai. And um, 
she did a one last call to the parents. And uh, she, she was like, yeah. Right. She was saying later, she was a little bit disappointed because she couldn't hear that they were hiding something from her. But that's because I hadn't asked yet. A few minutes after the call, I'm in the, the lounge toilet and uh, calling the uh, believer and Tony to ask her for Carol's hand. And uh, at some point, on the, at some unspecified point on the trip, True to their word, they uh, were very uh, kept the secret, kept the secret from Alan, kept the secret from Carol, and uh, we hope it was a surprise. Um, right. So now we've uh, we've been together for four and a eight years. Um, well, it's gone quick. <laughs> so about the next 25, 30 years will go even quicker. <laughs> I would, I would like to thank the, the bridesmaids um, for, for uh, helping Carol tonight uh, and today and making her ready and keeping her nerves calmed and not getting her too drunk last night. Um, you, look, you look very lovely tonight. And, uh, getting there. Getting there. So, oh, I, I do have to thank uh, some more people, um, uh, my, my groomsmen, for helping me out today and being with me last night and yes, uh, beating me on some games of all last night, not, not at all. Um, and also thanks uh, mainly to Alan and, and, uh, and Fab for the, uh, the Bucks night where, where I didn't actually uh, get tied to the pole naked like the invite promised, uh, but I think that's because Alan had passed out. I couldn't organize it. <laughs> Thanks for my sister Catherine for being the MC, uh, Father Vin for the, the, the words of advice today and the wedding ceremony, and uh, thanks for the boat ship for the excellent uh, staff and function uh, today, uh, especially uh, Graham and Claire, Graham still around, um, and for all their help and suggestions. Um, and uh, that's, that's it. I hope you have a fun night. Um, we're going to have the mains now. Yeah. And I'll pass you, <laughs> pass you back to the sister. <laughs> Thanks, Dave, right. We're having the mains now, and then there will be the cutting of the cake and. Um, and dancing following that, so I'll get up and let you know about the dancing when we've had our main sense. <laughs>